Okay, so we uh recording now on You Can Be Free. I got a regular uh with us today, Jackie Wade. Who's, I think this is like your third time being uh on here, third or fourth time, I'm not for sure, but I just want to thank you for coming on uh tonight and also just thank you just for just being a blessing not to just you can be free ministry but to the uh deliverance ministry you've helped me out with deliverances when it comes to women who's reached who's reached out to me uh we prayed with people in tennessee over the phone just doing all kind of stuff midnight prayers 3 a.m prayers a lot of people don't really know uh how much you get down and how much you really have been a blessing to my life and a lot of people don't really know too how silly you are uh, you just had me cracking up before we even started recording. So I just thank God for all of that because us together, just, I don't know, we we laughing about something all the time. But uh, tonight we're going to be talking about something that you spoke into my life. You know, you was ministering to me just by telling me what God was showing you about the importance of time and then how we spend our time and what are we doing with our time. Um, right after you was telling me about that, I ended up seeing this movie and I don't know if you've seen it, but I think I talked to you about it and it was a movie with Justin Timberlake on it and it, and I can't think of the name of it, but it had something to do with time. And in the movie, people were, I think you have to like, instead of people getting paid, like in the real world, you know, when we work, we get paid in this movie instead of getting paid, you get time. And a lot of people only had like a year. And then some of them had months and some of them had weeks. Some of them just had days. And that's how they was living. And so it just kind of just got me thinking after talking to you, just like, what am I doing with my time? You know, and time is something that I take really important because once I spend my time and once I waste my time, I can't get that time back, you know? And then, so it just kind of just make me think like, you know, since God has, you know, blessed me with, uh, with different gifts, you know, and uh, revelation and knowledge, like what have I been doing with those gifts? You know, what have I been doing with the time that, cause we don't never know when our last day on this earth will be. It's a lot of people who didn't wake up uh, today. It's a lot of people who just pass now as I speak all over the world. So if you could take me back, I know it's been a couple of weeks since we've been talking. It's been a lot of stuff that's, that's been going on, but if you could just take me back to that conversation we had uh, about time. We were just talking about time and how we feel like we have so much time. You think about at a young age, you feel like you got the whole rest of your life um, and that just time just moves so slowly as a kid. I couldn't wait to be an adult because I could make my own decisions, do my own thing. I didn't have to really answer to anybody. But then as time went on, it's like you graduate high school and then like, I'm already 50. It's like that time was, it just went by so quick. It seems like the childhood years were extremely slow. But once I hit 18 and then 21, it just seems as if the time, I guess, I, I guess time didn't really go faster, but I guess we get busy. So it makes it appear or seem as if time is going by faster, but either way, time moves very quick or very quickly. Um, and we, we're just in a season where we don't have time to waste. We can waste money. If you waste money, you can hustle. You can have a yard sale, you can have a fish fry. I mean, you could do other things. You could sell things on Facebook market. You could hustle and make that money back. But when we waste our time, we're not able to get that time back. I agree. I, uh, You know, as you was talking, I was thinking about uh, a word that God had gave me. I think it was about five years ago. And uh, I was speaking at this church and you was there that day. And The last thing that I had said that I remember the Holy Spirit giving me is that, you know, when we are here on the earth, like you said, we don't never know how much time we got. But what I was thinking about is like, how will we be remembered, you know, with the time that God given us? You know, if I was to leave this earth today, you know, would people even know that I was gone? And I'm not talking about like, um, people that know us, you know what I mean? I'm just talking about like with the time that we have on this earth, what effect did we make, you know, while we was here? 
or whose life has been changed, you know, since we've been on the earth or, um, you know, even like with the people that, that know us day to day, you know, what would they have to re- truly say about how we treated them or how we live? Because a lot of times people think, you know, or I put it like this. I just talked about myself, you know, before I, the way that I used to live 15 years ago, I used to try to build up so much money on this earth. And I used to just try to uh, do a lot of stuff that just really just didn't even matter. You know, not even realizing at that point in time that it was really the grace of God that was on my life that was just keeping me because any day he could have took me out, you know, and I had spent so much time worrying about stuff that didn't even matter, you know, um, arguing about stuff that didn't even matter. And I give anything if I could get that time back, but it's like I can't because once we leave here, we we gone and me being a person that speaks at people's funeral. I just, I thank God that I have never been asked to speak at a person's funeral who just, you know, uh, who just was just living all kind of crazy and stuff like that, which we all had wild lives and stuff like that. But some of the the blessings that I have gotten to speak at people's funeral is that I could say good things about them, about how they spent, you know, their time. Because it's like you were saying, we just don't never really know when our last day will be, you know? And then, so what I've been thinking about lately since me and you had that conversation is, you know, the Bible talks about when we get to heaven, Jesus will say, well done, get good and faithful servant. But, you know, there was a time I was saying in my life, what have I did? What was well, you know, what have we did since we've been here with the time that we have gotten? There was somebody I was talking to not that long ago. And I know you're doing the same thing, uh, you know, in your own like time, like how we talking about you talking about writing a book. There was a, a lady that I was talking to. She had felt an urgency. She was like, I got to write this book in June. And I was like, why you got to do it now? And she was just like, because God has been teaching me about time. And she said, I don't even know, you know, how much time I got, but I just want to be a good steward of the time uh, that I do have now. Just going back to the, some stuff that God was showing you about time. How do you feel like not just with you, but a lot of us just waste time just on a daily, just wasting time? We do. But before I answer that question, I just want to back up to something you had said about how we live our lives and how we want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I had read a poem. Um, it was written by some lady. Her first name is Linda. Um, I can find the information and you can add it in your comment section. But it's called The Dash. And we all have a day that we are born and we all have a day that we die. But what's important is the dash. What do we do with that time from the time we were born until the time we die? So when you were saying that you didn't have to speak at anyone's funeral where they were not living a good life or that you didn't have good things to say about them. Right. It's very important. It doesn't really matter how we start. And in a sense, it doesn't really matter how we finish. What's really important is how we use our time on a daily basis. I started watching the Netflix series and I think it's called Lincoln Lawyer or something like that. Anyway, I start, I don't watch a lot of TV but it got my attention. So I watched it for two nights in a row. But when I had to go to bed that first morning, cause it was like 3.30 in the morning, I had started watching like maybe eight or nine o'clock at night. Then I got mad that I had to turn the TV off because I had to get up at 5.30 in the morning to go to work. Now, was I enjoying it? Yes. Was there anything productive coming out of it? Absolutely not. So I had really, in a sense, wasted my time. But I was thinking when I read my Bible, there has never been a time when I've read that Bible and I have been mad that I have to close that Bible and go to sleep. It's all about how we choose to use our time. I'm sure we could go to concert and it could go on for three or four hours and we don't have a problem with it. We want to keep it going. Um, We can go shopping. Say We could stay at the shopping mall for hours. Um, just whatever hobbies we go to the park, we could do these things for hours. I just think that when it comes to the things of God, I'm not saying some people don't spend hours in prayer because sometimes we spend hours in prayer, but 
I'm just saying it's easy for us to waste our time and not even really be aware of the time that we are wasting. Right, right, right. I remember you was telling me that, so I was hoping you was going to say that, but it just it came back to me too. And one of the, the importance that I was wanting to, uh, you know, to get online with you is because like that conversation that we had, it really did bless me. And it was just making me think about so much stuff. You know, because unfortunately, like we don't never know. I don't know if I'm going to make it through the day. I don't know if God going to take me when I get off this with you. You know, I don't know if I'm going to make it through the weekend. And uh, it was just making me think, how would people live each and every day if they knew Jesus was coming back tonight or if they knew he was coming back tomorrow? Or like I just said before, how would they live if they knew he was coming back this weekend or if he was going to take them because we're not guaranteed another day. And I just think sometimes we live life. Like we just have so much time. I had somebody tell me not that long ago about, you know, well, what if, you know, they have kids and all this stuff start going uh, wrong on the earth. And, you know, we end up in the seven years of tribulation and all this other stuff. And it's like, we make so much, we, we worry about things that haven't even happened yet. Not even realizing that we're not promised to see that, you know, our loved ones that are not promised to see that people that we mad at or people that we hold grudges. We don't know, you know, if these people that, anybody on earth we don't ever know if we'll see them again and uh so talking to you it really just blessed me because it just made me just think like what am i doing each and every day you know and i don't i'm not living in fear like living like okay oh i might die today or something like that or god might come back today but it's just it's me living just knowing that I don't have, I don't never know how much time that I got. Nobody knows how much time that they got. So why worry about stuff when we don't even know if we're going to be there to see it. But at the same time, I'm living more now since I've talked to you in preparation for the things that I'm believing for, because there's so many times people put things up on the shelves. Like I told you about the lady who was talking about write a book. We've been talking about write a book, but we don't ever know how much time that we got. And that a lot of things people have in their hearts are the desires of heaven are the desires from God. God is putting it on their heart for them to start that movie or to start that class or to start that ministry or to start that book or to start anything, you know, that is going to glorify him. And we just walk around day to day, kind of just like we just got all the time on, in the world and we don't. And what really got me thinking is like, there's so many people, the things that God gives us to do and the gifts and talents, because everybody has something, it's not necessarily about us. Yeah, it will be a blessing for somebody to write a book and get rich off of it, but it's really about the people who need your testimony. You know, and if you don't have a testimony, it's good to keep pressing in the Lord so you can get that testimony because the testimony is not about us. It's about for the people that is hurting right now who is believing on you to get through whatever it is that you're going through because they need that hope, you know. And so when you was talking about that, it just was really just changing my mindset just about how I live day to day, not realizing like I'm just I'm just at a place in life where I don't have no time to waste. You know, I don't have time wasting time on the phone talking to people who ain't talking about nothing. I ain't got time wasting time in any place where people are playing church. I mean, I just got to get down to business because we all got things to do uh, right now. Now, I know God was speaking to you about time in that season, which it wasn't that long ago. But has he given you any new revelation about that? Or is there anything else that he's speaking to you? on about now because he just gave me a word right before i got on here so i'm gonna share that i ain't trying to just jump all over the place but before i go to switch to something else i want to see did he any more revelation or wisdom about time and uh if so share that with us and then if you got something new you could drop that too okay with time we are in a season where it's time for us to not worry um matthew 6 I think it's around verse 33 through 35. It talks about uh, which one of us um, can add one cubic measure to our life by worrying. He says, no, not one. And he's just telling us that we don't have time to waste worrying about, worrying about things. He knows what we have need of. So it's time for us to press into him like never before. It doesn't matter what you see on the news. It doesn't matter... Uh, what you read on the internet, um, 
It doesn't matter if you're going through something personally. We just have to know that there is an appointed time. There is a season. Um, and God has just set things up for us in advance. But we need to do things that um, we're going to see the fruit of our labor. Um, wasting our time is not going to get us anywhere. Wearing is not going to make us feel better about any situation. It's just going to make us feel worse. So instead of wearing, it's time for us to worship. Where, uh, worship is one of our weapons. It's time for us to get in the word like never before. We want to know what God is saying or what he's speaking uh, or what he's telling us, you know, is going on or what's going to happen then we can get in his word and he will instruct us and direct us on the things that we need to do. So like you said, we don't have time to worry. We just need to be in the word. We need to be worshiping on a regular basis, not beating ourselves up if you miss a day or two and you hadn't had time to worship, but uh, just really put making, you know, just putting forth a conscious effort to really just to be about God's business business and not wasting our time on things that aren't worth our time. Like you may want to speak somebody out, but before you speak that person out and give into your emotions, you should just really say, you know what, before I even say this, is this person even worth my time? Some things are just not worth your time. If I see something on TV and I don't want to watch it, then I'm not even going to watch it. I'm just like, okay, let me hear it and turn the station. And I'm not saying other times you could be watching TV and you say, oh, I don't really want to watch this, but it catches your attention. And then you um, spend more time watching it. You know, you didn't really plan on watching it as long as you did, but you watch it. But like I said, we just really need to be conscious and aware of what we're spending our time on. And if we would write some goals, the Bible says to write the vision and to make it plain, though it tarry, wait on it. We need to write down some goals that we have and we need to spend our time focusing on those goals, praying over those goals, um, reading scriptures about those, uh, those goals, uh, doing research on how to write a book or connecting with people, uh, positive conversations. It's a lot of things that we could be doing with our time that will uh, produce a positive outcome. So again, we just don't have time to be wasting our time. I had spoken at church uh, recently, like you had mentioned, um, and I had taken a big purse that looked like a clock and it starts out that we feel like we have all this time but then I took a watch band and then the clock part was missing. So all I had was the band to show. So if we are not uh, careful with how we use our time, we'll have nothing left to show for the time that's wasted. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. I agree. Um, now, you know, with this channel be, being called, you can be free. You know, it's, it's pretty much just about deliverance. Uh, and so can you share any testimonies where God came through from you, whether that be deliverance or anything where you just know like that one's nobody but God that came through from me in this particular time in my life. I know we all got testimonies, uh, but just anything that comes to your heart, like right now that God done for you that can encourage somebody. Um. Yes. Doing when we first, when, uh, when COVID first came on the scene, I was laid off. Um, and I was just believing God to provide everything that I needed, which, which he did. He gave me a job that I wasn't even qualified for. So, I mean, God, I mean, it's so many things that God has done for me time and time and time again. So that's just one short testimony of what he's done, but he's done so many things. I mean, if I had two or three months, I couldn't tell you all of them. Okay. What do you think is one of the biggest things that you've seen when it comes to healing and deliverance and the supernatural? Uh, what's one of the biggest things I've seen? Yeah. Whether if it was something that, uh, cause you know, we be, we be tapping in just in prayer. So whether if it be something that God has did just on a one-on-one -on -one in your life, uh, and you knew it was God or something that you've seen, um, uh, you know, God working through somebody else um like and again it's so many things but one thing that I'll never forget is I was with prophetess Tammy and she was doing a revival and there was a young lady um probably, I don't even know if, if she was maybe 18 or 19 years old she had had an accident she had fell off of a horse 
So she had to have brain surgery. So when we saw her at the church, she was completely bald. And uh, Prophetess Tammy started praying over her. And, the, and God moved and her hair started growing from her scalp. And I mean, I actually saw hair growing from her scalp. So that's one of the things I'll never forget. I mean, it was mind blowing. A creative miracle. I was thinking about that too, as I as I was asking you, I was thinking about that time because you told me about that and I know who you're talking about. Uh, and I just wanted people to hear something like that because a lot of times, you know, we, people, we pray and not having any expectation for things to change because believing is different than wishing and hoping. And sometimes, you know, with people, especially in the world today, with everything that people are seeing and uh, hearing on the news and stuff like that, people are in a place where they are so moved by what they see and what they hear. And when they're praying, they're hoping and wishing. But like I said before, praying and wishing is not the same thing as believing. And we should be in a place where we are actually believing for things to change, you know, praying with expectations. You know, we have been in a place, me, you, and my cousin Irvin, where we actually just been seeing God move. But it's like before I got there, I just had to make up my mind this year, like, God, I'm praying with expectation that if I'm asking for somebody to be healed, if I'm asking for somebody to be delivered, if I'm speaking something and I'm believing something, that it's going to come to pass one way or another. And I think people need to know that when they pray that something is happening to the spirit realm, you know, whether that's something the thing is that we don't always see God move because we could be praying for somebody in a whole nother country or another city or another state. And we may not actually see it coming to fruition because sometimes God actually a lot of times God doesn't move on our time. He doesn't uh, he's not in a rush. You know, God is not, you know, we may want something. Actually, we always want something like right then. But God knows the perfect time and when he's going to allow everything come to pass. And sometimes it don't happen the way that we think it should happen or it don't happen when we should think it's when we think it should happen. But we should always know that for one thing, it can happen right then. Just like what you said, you've seen somebody's hair grow back. But just pl- praying from a place of expectation when you pray, you just know God is going to move. Uh, something that I got right before that I had got on today. I was just praying and I was just praying. I was just praying. I was spending time worshiping uh, before I had got on with you. And then I was just thinking about uh, so many things that God has done in my life. And I had just posted a picture on Facebook earlier today and I had a bottle and I was just, I, I was so drunk that night. I was drooling from alcohol. And at that point in time in my life, that was really before I was receiving the fruit of the destruction that I was, uh, sowing into my life because whatever we sow we're gonna reap um and so i at that point my mindset was like a lot of people in the world and with the the way that the enemy is deceiving people is he's making them believe that you're gonna find so much joy and you're gonna find so much peace in this world the devil wants people to believe that he can make them he can outdo god when it comes to blessing because a lot of people really don't believe that god can change their life and that he can give them a new life and he can give them a better life. Because a lot of times we see Christians today that they're depressed, uh, they're broke, they're living in fear, doubt, unbelief, worried all the time in a state uh, of anxiety. And so the world can see us and be like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be hateful like they are. I don't want to be like these people who ain't never smiling and all this other stuff. So the world looks good to them. And I just was hearing God speak to me so clear that the devil can never outdo me, you know, that I am good and the world needs to know that I am good because Christ said that he had came that, that we may have life and more abundantly. And it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through things. It doesn't mean that the devil is not going to try to attack us because I really didn't go through true warfare until I surrendered my life to God. But there's always a blessing with the sacrifice. Nothing that we give up and nothing that we go through will be uh, wasted. And God had just put that on my heart. I don't know who that's for. And it might just be for me, but it was just right before I got on. I, I just was hearing God so clear, just like let my people know that I am good and that they can trust me with the things that he's going uh, or what, whatever he's allowing to happen. They have to know he's allowing that to happen. And if he's allowing something like that to happen, that, you know, we can trust him with it. Um, but that's all I got on here. If you got any closing words or remarks, like 
regardless if it has to do with time. I know one thing, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I'm telling you, there's been a lot of times in my life where you have encouraged me when it comes to faith. You are a woman of faith. You don't just, you were just saying earlier, or it might've been yesterday, we'd be talking so much. You was talking about how it's one thing for you to just speak in people's life and tell people stuff. But it's like, you also have to just live this yourself. And that's one thing that I've seen you do going through your own trials and tribulations, the way, how you handled the situation. It wasn't really a situation, but when, uh, you, when your brother passed away, not that long ago, you went to church that day and you start worshiping God. So for anybody who is, uh, in a situation in their life where they feel like their faith is just, you know, under attack or they feel like they're losing their faith. Uh, what word do you have for them? Just anything. And it's, it, I mean, it is so much when you were talking about uh, having faith and believing. And then a lot of times Jesus would ask them, he said, do you believe? Go, your faith has made you whole. So faith is a key ingredient in getting um, the things that we are believing God for. Right. Just say, for example, you have a, a lamp and you have a bulb, you have a cord, but it has to be connected into the power source. Come on now. For the light to work. Mm -hmm. So faith is the activator. Now, I'm not saying that God is like a slot machine. You put your money in and you may get something you may not. That's not the type of God we serve. He's not a deadbeat dad. He doesn't give us false uh, promises. But a faith that cannot be tested, is it even really faith? Because, I mean, if we just go on whichever way the wind blows, we, I mean, we have to know that we know that we know that we know that we know. Because there's a lot of false gods out here. You can say, oh, I'm going to pray to this stone. I'm going to get this. Uh, I'm going to burn some sage in my house. And people say, oh, this is so good. You want to get, you know, demonic spirits out of your house, burn this sage. Or, oh, you feeling depressed and put this crystal in your purse. Now, we got different crystals for different things. If you want love, put this pink crystal. And if you want this and if you want that. But a lot of people I've talked to that have tried those things. They said that they got some peace, but it doesn't compare to the peace that they have since they've given their life over to God. So there'll always be a counterfeit. Just like in the Old Testament, remember when they had all those plagues and stuff going on. Now the magicians would do the same thing that Moses was doing. Remember, um, the uh, Moses would do something, or the magicians would do something. Moses would do something, the magicians would try to do it, and right. then whatever Moses did, God always outdid what the counterfeits were trying to do. So that's not anything unusual or un or, or strange. Because the devil is a lie. He will always try to make you feel like a cubic zirconium is a real diamond just because it's got to shine when the sun hits it. But we're in a season where people are just falling away and they'll just believe in anything and everything. So we got to have a strong foundation. We got to know that God is God. He's God when it feels good to us. And he's God when it doesn't feel good to us. He's God when he takes us through the fire. He's God, God when he takes us through the storm. But the good thing about God is the things that we're going through, he's not saying, oh, D, go through this alone. Whatever you're going through, you're not going through it by yourself. He was like, yeah, you're going through it, but I'm right here with you. I'm in the fire with you. Just like uh, Daniel, uh, I mean, uh, what's it, uh, the, the three uh, men that were in the um, furnace. The three said, Hebrew boys. Three they said, we put three in there, but we see four because God was in there with them. So God is not asking us to do things without him. Now, do we try to do things without him? Absolutely. Because sometimes we think we know more than God. So when he's taking us through things, it's really to develop us. It's never to hurt us. It's never to harm us. It's not even to hinder us. It is to develop us. And when we love God, it says all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Now, if you love God and I love God and the people of God love God, then no matter what we go through, we got to stand on his word and know that his word is true. This is working for our good, even when it doesn't feel good. If I go to the gym and I'm lifting up a weight, the weight might, you know, it's going to tear my muscle a little bit. 
it, it, it hurts, but it's working for my good because if I want to see the re results of it, then I got to suffer through some things. I got to, you know, I got to go when I don't feel like going. I got to lift weights when I don't want to lift weights. I got to, you know, just keep, just keep going because I want to see results. And we can't have a, you know, a microwave type of God. Well, I won't put this in a microwave because I'm praying on this for two seconds. We pray on something for two seconds. We ain't spoke to God all week or maybe all month. Some of us, not even all year. But we want to give God two seconds in the microwave. Like, God, I called out to you today and I ain't called out on you in a year. But I believe you're going to do this and you got to do it right now. God don't work like that. How are we going to tell God, oh, we're going to give you two seconds of our time and we want a full bag of something? Because I think about in our natural, I mean, in the flesh, if you had a niece or a nephew that you hadn't heard from all year long, okay, because they decided to pick up the telephone to call your phone number. Oh, Uncle D, I love you and I need this. Can you give me $500? Your first thought is like, uh, I have not heard from you in all year. And you know, you have some nerve to call me. Haven't been calling to see if I'm breathing, dead or anything. But you interrupted your busy schedule to call me to ask you for something that you need. We can't trick God. Again, he's not a slot machine. You can't put your money in like, oh, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you today. But if you don't deliver this to me right away, then, you know, I'm not, I'm just going to give up on you. God don't need us in the first place. He can make another one of you, another one of me. He was like, you know, you privileged that I even got my hand of protection on you. I, God doesn't need us. He said he'll call the rocks to cry out for him. Mm, so mm, we should mm. be feeling honored and privileged that he would even have his hand on us, giving us, showing us grace and mercy every day. And we're just in a season where we are so unappreciative. We act like somebody owes us something. And not even do we act like people owe us something. We act like God owes us something. He was like, the breath, the breath and the air that's in your lungs is mine. And you have nerve to tell me I owe you something. I owe you absolutely nothing. I created you from the dirt, blew my breath into your body. The air in your lungs is mine, and you have the nerve to act like I owe you something. And I know God has got to be thinking, you know what? You have really failed and bumped your head. I owe you absolutely nothing. And God can say, you know what? I'm sick of you wasting your time. That's it. I'm taking my breath back. Mm -hmm. So we just got to really just, just quit trying to trick God. And this is the thing. Have you ever met somebody and you dated them? But some people want to get, just say they went out with somebody one time. They already planning a wedding. They haven't spent any time to even know <laughs> yeah. this person. Right. They see them. Oh, they look so this. They look so that. Oh, we'll have beautiful babies. And you only been at this dinner table with this person like 30 minutes, but they done already planned out everything. Mm -hmm. You got to spend time with that person to know if this, is this person crazy? Is this person a good fit? Do we have anything in common? What, you know, what is this person like? What's their favorite color? You know, do we have, you know, what do we have good conversations? What can I help this person with? If they have goals and I have goals, what can I do to help this person with their goals? We, a lot of times we don't spend time with God. We don't even date him. We doing like one night stands with God. Mm -hmm. And then wondering why you not getting a marriage or a relationship or a commitment because we doing a one night stand. We doing a drive by. We give God two minutes and we swear he, we, he just really owes us something. But we'll give people who don't mean us any good our time. You know what I mean? We will. People do us. I mean, it doesn't even have to be, uh, it could just be friendships. It doesn't even have to be anything intimate. I mean, it could just be friendships. It could just be uh, two female friends just hanging out as friends. You know, nothing funny, but just hanging out with friends. And our friends will mistreat us. And guess what we'll do? We'll keep giving them more time. Right. More time, more time, more time, more time. Then we'll start justifying why they're doing what they're doing or why we going to keep dating somebody for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Knowing after that first six months, we knew that was not the one. We're going to still just keep giving them our time, our time, our time. But when it comes to God, if he doesn't do one thing that we asked him to do, we don't look at the 2,999 things that he has done. We're going to focus on the one thing that we felt like he didn't come through for us on, and then we want to give up on him. But we give our time to everybody who doesn't deserve our time. We waste our time on jobs and everything else. 
Jackie, you had went off. I was gonna say something, but I got one minute left. I'm just gonna this. It's you done. You shut it down. You shut it down. I want to thank you for your time. Hey, that was that was powerful. That was a blessing to me. I'm definitely gonna watch this again. Uh, I only got a couple of seconds left, so I'm gonna end it with what I always say. I hope this blessed y'all. Just remember, no matter what you're going through, you can be free because who the sun has set free is free indeed. I'm out. I love y'all.